Hello everybody and welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm a Captain Foley avatar. Holographic avatar. Yeah, yeah I can tell. Yeah. It's not quite perfect, it's just I can... Well, I, I'm right here in person because apparently the signal won't go all the way through. It'll go through a gravitational anomaly of un unimaginable proportion, but it won't go to England. <laughs> What's that say about England, man? Anyway, he's Commander Cocking. I think our rain keeps it away. <laughs> yes. Today we're talking about the holographic um, tether, the holographic, holographic link, um, that uh, the avatar that Stamets used in episode two of season four, Anomaly of Discovery. Brand um, new hollow tech. It, so my question is, is it's not though. I was going to say, is the thing on his head a portable holographic emitter, but it's not. I assume Bookship has holographic emitters. Um, okay, so that's fine then. It's not a new port mobile emitter of sorts, but Stamets has to join Book on the ship essentially to get data readings of the anomaly. But he's not a minder. He's a scientist man. Yes, Book's flying. He's going to be doing the sciencey stuff. And uh, I love I love how he brought up the point. Like, is it you sure it's a good idea to have the two people that can operate the spore drive on the same ship going on this dangerous anomaly? I was like, okay, it's okay. You'll be a hologram. You'll be fine. You'll be sitting here. Um, so yeah, they, they basically have a projected avatar of him on the ship uh, that communicates in real time, and and then they attach a tether to the ship for safety reasons. But I also thought that was to keep the the real time holographicness of the thing until this, the tether goes away, and then everything is still fine. There's no glitchy. There's no lag. So. Well, and isn't just that though. What makes it special is beyond the nature that it was able to go through a massive graviton anomaly completely flawlessly is that it's a, a sort of hard light hologram as a red dwarf terminology where Stamets can actually interact with everything and the connective device on his, on his temple allowed the hollow matrix to connect with his matrix, his brain matrix, and allow him to actually feel, have tactile response of what he's doing. So it feels like he's there because obviously you can hollow talk for a long time, even now apparently retcon back into pre-Kirk. And then you can see and, and, and hear everything in the room and even sit down on desks as Sarek did. So this is tech that's super old. Um, but this version actually lets you feel with the moment. While he won't die, although they did make the joke that if you crash, you'll probably feel that. And that's true, that I'll, you know, oh dear. But you won't be dead dead. You can tactilely... I don't know why the tactile necessarily was, a be was an important feature. If all I do is press buttons. The buttons aren't tactile buttons. Why would that make a difference? And smelling anything wouldn't make a difference. You can already hear and see as a hologram, and you can already touch the hologram, so why... Made me wonder, too, if you can feel everything, if the hologram, like, smash into a console, does that mean he breaks a rib? Is it like um, the whole thing of in your dreams, if you die, you die in real life thing? Like, if they crash, is he going to have massive trauma? Or at least... <laughs> pain is in wow. the brain, right? And you can, you know, there are, there are multiple sci-fis where you can turn off pain but still have physical harm. This is vice versa. You would feel the pain of an impact, but obviously your physical lung would then puncture. You might then get a, a, a nervous react, you know, a nerve response reaction of, oh God, you know, close the close the valves, change the heart flow, change the, you know, adrenaline. Like that would then react, but there would be the physical damage. There are occasional sci-fis where your brain can manifest internal injuries, but I don't know why that would, you know, like I say, it wouldn't break a bone. So there are obviously limitations, even if it was bad. But that, I mean, I do think this is going to be a setup for later in the season that we're going to get a point where, oh no, what a twist, Michael Burnham's in a hologram the whole time and she's talking to bad villain number three and it's a hologram. Like, it literally creates that sort of situation. And we have had scenes in other treks where you have a hologram as a distraction and, and many a time, this isn't new by any means, it's just the idea of being a, a full representation of yourself to the point where the other Stamets has to lie down in the bed and sort of close his eyes. Like, he is, his consciousness is really there experiencing. He doesn't experience both at the same time. He isn't dual-wielding realities. He's transferring enough of a real-time mental state into the other him, which is, which is interesting. And I, I like this limitation, because it would have been really weird if he'd actually been two of him working at the same time. That would have been too much. So there's, there's a good limitation there. But the fact that it was able to go through a graviton anomaly, it, it, and if you notice, they had a slight blue shimmer in his first scene, and they just ignored that for everything else because it just costs money. So he's just a real person. Every I mean, it doesn't need to have a hollow shimmer, but you know, it's thirty-second century holotech. It wouldn't need it. It should be flawless unless it's a you know like a 
uh, electric cars, you put an engine sounding because it's people expect it. So there's you, know, you could argue that, but it was just weird how it was flawless. And it would have been expensive to keep adding those distortions, but they really need to have a moment in the story where the, it cuts out, it comes back. He's having huge like discomfort because he's like seeing both like one eye is one world, one eye is the other, and it's it's messing with his brain because his brain can't process it. Like it needed some level of deconstruction of his ability to work to add tension, but the fact that it was flawless through this arguably one of the strongest anomalies we've seen of its kind gravimetrically. It's really good tech, is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> yes. Too good. Yeah, I, I would have liked I would have liked the idea of a leg and that causing some kind of problems. Um, on, on the actual stamets that would have been uh, much better actually um, because once once tether cut away I'm like oh he's not going to last much longer he's going to be like disconnected and book's going to literally be on his own um, which is kind of the vibe of the episode anyway because um, he's his, his planet's destroyed and stuff so very good tech I mean it's not it's like a cell phone signal when you go into a basement <laughs> you don't always have good cell phone reception um, you got to get into that perfect spot, or every comes and goes. That's what I expected to happen, and it just didn't. Um, it is 900 year in advanced tech, though, so there is that. But but yeah, the still. ship gets hit by one thing, and cra- you know everything goes head bluey, and there's now explosions on the bridge, and book ship loses navigation within two minutes, and yet can fly. You know, it was presented as a really d- as a really bad, dangerous. You know, the rocks are flying, and the shields are gonna. Oh, it's fine. That's one. Of those, I mean, look at our review. It's one of the tensionless scenes, having him be flawless. And I'll also have a conversation because they need to have a, com- a real conversation. So you can't have going, can you, about your parents, you know, it, it's not acceptable. But then all the things hitting the, the shields, is like, well. It would have been kind of cool if the holographic emitters kind of got damaged as well. So with the weaker signal and damaged holographic emitters, if Stamish just became like a wireframe person, you can't, you can't see any features, just a wireframe. That'd, That'd be, be kind of neat. Or goes black and white first and then wireframe and then. That'd be fantastic, actually. That'd be a really. But that's, be... talk about talk about expensive. <laughs> so. Yeah, but that would have been really clever. Yeah, it was definitely a, a you know it does like I say it's, it's set up for later in the season hundred percent. It's going to change how we do certain things because it means that. You know, well it, well, it does kind of feel like when in season one they were to detect a cloaked sarcophagus ship, across the quadrant. From Pavo. All of those parts of the sentence are wrong. None of those things make sense. Not quite as egregious that was obscene, but this is also silly. But it does make me think then that we're going to get a scene. Well, cause, well and then Doug's, Doug Drex has joked about how everyone's on a hol- holographic bridge, there's no need for a real thing. At this point, you just stay lying down in bed, put the thing on, now you're a hologram on the bridge, there's no need to get out of bed. <laughs> you can get your rest and go to work at the same time. Because then you're not, they're not having physical exertion. Your body's, I mean, obviously you need that to keep fit, but they don't need to. You know, I mean, why not when we get into, say, the warp core's damaged and there's dev- deadly radiation? Nope! <laughs> hologram. Well, it goes back to episode one. She should have done a hologram of her flying a work bee. Way less dangerous. There we go. And she Adira, wouldn't get hit. Tilly, have them have send, send over holograms. Like, oh, no. It makes it, it makes it almost like God tech. Oh, no, that, that's a horrible retcon, that. isn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Keep everybody safe. Keep them on your ship. Keep the ship back a little f- as far as you need to. It just it, it takes away all the tension if, if 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 they start doing that. The only quantifier to that is that book ship is a full spaceship, so it presumably has high-end holographic tech. Or what we wouldn't necessarily, and the station wouldn't necessarily. So it has to be, but certainly for a Starfleet Command or any other main mainline Federation ship, it would be this equivalency. And it's and in the own ship, you know, for repairing dangerous things, all that tension's gone. You know, send a dot and three hollow engineers. We're fine, and they're just you know you know. It's interesting, though. It is interesting. I just would have been nice to see some limitations beyond just they have to lie down. Well, hold on. I mean, you made me think of something there. Because they said, shouldn't we just send some dots? And they're like, well, we can't because we won't be able to communicate with them. Mm-hmm. We may not be able to communicate with them, yes. That's before they decided that the book was going with his ship. Um, so. And, they might, and they'll get destroyed by the pressures. That was a secondary thing. But that was the first thing I said, yes. Just yes. Thinking. So it's just interesting, you know, that... Uh, this high, highly advanced holographic representation of Stamets can ex- can exist in such a huge gravitational anomaly, and not have m- a little flicker here and there, but that's it. It's nah. <laughs> problems, problems. And we joked in a previous video it should have been like the idea of the further in the more because gravity, gravity changes time. 
you know, it would have been nice if he was getting out of sync. And so then Stamets is then responding to a thing Book said four seconds ago. And then he's trying to control a thing. And it, and it would have been a huge cluster F of a scene. But it would have been such an interesting tension moment. Where like, okay, how do I plan How do I plan four seconds behind? Then obviously Michael Burnham talking to them would be a rele- you know be less relevant. Because then if that's not real time, then the, that whole gimmick wouldn't work either. So well, they couldn't create too many obstacles, I feel like. Otherwise it would have broken the ending. Because the ending was relatively easy. You know, it's like how can they how can they leave on this this wave when they were getting bashed and shields down twenty percent with all this rock, but they were in a a gravity with more rock that's going to bash her even harder. It you know it's just a few things like that. It was yeah. weird, but yeah, interesting tech. It will absolutely come back, and we'll start to see what it does. So anyways, comment down below what you thought about this tech and the problems or not problems as you see it. Let us know if we're wrong, if we're right elaborate in the comment section have a discussion with other people and us as well and if you want to do that in real time you can do that on our lives just make sure you're subscribed and notified so you know when we're doing a live and then you can join us and put in your two cents during a real-time conversation which won't be delayed even over skype through a gravitational anomaly that is england (laughs) and if you want to support us directly then please do via patreon paypal join the youtube channel with the join button or super chatting as you said all great ways all help the channel and we cannot keep the channel going without such lovely support so if you can please do if you can't don't worry we just hope that you can at some point or another it'd be appreciated thanks yeah so until that and just at the end there skype hiccuped for a second as you were saying that and it's kind we of had the lag yep yeah. we did anyway guys until next time see you later bye bye guys <laughs>